Hey everyone, Dr. Kehe here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do all of the things in R that you have to do in this week's R homework. So I've loaded R here. Remember, we can do everything through R Commander to make our lives a little bit easier. To do that, in this little box right here, type the library, lowercase, upper R, CM, DR, hit enter, and that brings up our good friend, R Commander. We've got our commander up here. We need to load a data set. Now for your homework assignment, you're going to use a different data set. Uh, I'm going to pull up one from uh, this guy, Professor Andy Field. He's written several statistics textbooks and uh, has some, some nice data for us. So I'm going to go to data, import data from SPSS data set. I'm going to keep the default name, click OK. And it's angry pigs. So if we pull this data up, what we have here make it a little bit bigger. We have the type of game. We have aggression at baseline, aggression at one month, six months, 12 months. So we have a couple of different games. People played Angry Birds or Tetris, and we're looking at how that influences aggression. So we have one, two, three, four, five variables, two, four, five variables. And let's see. Looks like 84 people here. So we have five variables, 84 people. So columns tells you variables, rows tells you the number of people. So the first thing I've asked you to do is to get a simple frequency table. You can get that through the statistics, statistics button right here. You can go to summaries and it's right there, frequency distributions. It's going to uh, pull up your categorical variables, so you're either in one category or another. In this case, uh, we have two different games. People either played Tetris or they played Angry Birds. So that's our only categorical variable. It's selected. We're going to hit OK. And it tells us 42 people played Tetris, 42 people played Angry Birds for the total N of 84 people. So 50% played Tetris, 50% played Angry Birds. So that's just a simple frequency distribution. These can be very uh, common and very useful in your method section, particularly participants. So you'll say uh, this number of people completed the study, 50% played Tetris while the rest played Angry Birds, that kind of thing. Now let's start getting some graphs. We have a graphs uh, drop down right here, and we have a lot of different options here. So we can go to histogram. We can look at all of our different aggression. So let's do baseline aggression first. Click OK. So here's the graph. Um, this is a histogram, so this is continuous data. You can have any score, it looks like this might be from 0 to 5, you can have a 3.5, 3.4, you could have scores in here, just with this small data set we didn't. Um, so this is our histogram, this looks approximately normal, so you can almost fit a bell curve over that, we'll be talking about normality and bell curve throughout the rest of the semester, we'll hit it pretty hard here in a couple of weeks. So this is a simple histogram. Typically, these will be touching just with this data. It didn't quite work out that way. Uh, we can do another one and see, um, actually, maybe six month will be a little bit better. So here you see they're touching. Um, this is actually skewed data, so it's positively skewed because the tail points to the positive. Again, we'll hit this idea of skew more in the future, but this is a histogram for you. I've also asked you to do a bar graph. The only difference between a histogram and a bar graph is the kind of data you're portraying. Histogram will show you continuous. Bar graph is going to be for categorical data. Of course, you could do continuous by categorical. We'll talk about that a little bit later. In our commander to get a bar graph, graphs, bar graph down here at the bottom. It's going to give you your categorical variables to choose from. I only have one right now. I'm going to click OK. And you can see it's an even 50-50 split, 42-42, playing Tetris and Angry Birds. You know this is a bar graph because we have two distinct categories. You're either in one or you're in the other. One graph we'll use quite a bit in this semester is a box and whisker plot. R calls it a box plot. If you go to graphs, 
box plot, you can pull that up. This is going to be a graph of our continuous variable. This is a great way to see if you have an outlier. So let's look at um, aggression at one month. Click OK. And here's our box plot. So in the box you have the majority of your data, 50% of your data fall within this box. You've got 25% going up, 25% going down. If you had an outlier, it would show up. This would be condensed and you'd have a little dot way down here. That's an outlier. It's someone that did not score similarly to everyone else in your data set. If you have an outlier, uh, in this course, your task is to remove it. So I've stuck that in there on purpose to make sure that you're running these box plots. So without a doubt, cut it and then in your write-up say, um, there was an error in the data that I removed. Because that's what it is, that's what I'm doing for you. So this is a box plot. We don't have any outliers in this box plot. We can look at a couple of others. Um, this was one month aggression, graphs, box plot, six month aggression. There we go, we've got some outliers there. So the further out they are, the further they are from the bulk of that data. So this person 15, I might consider kicking them out. They're probably okay. Let's see what the other ones look like. We've got 12 month so we've got a little bit of an outlier there. This one's okay. You'll notice when they're really extreme becomes very very obvious they'll be like most of your data will be up here and you'll have a dot way down here or it could be up down here and you'll have a dot way at the top this isn't the kind of distance we're worried about here what else did I ask you to do okay so we've done histogram bar graph box plot these are all coming straight from the graphs histogram box plot bar graph here of course you can do pie chart and those kinds of things. So you can play around with this if you'd like. Right now I'd like to look at aggression by type of game. So let's do that with, uh, with means first. So if we go to um, statistics, summaries, table of statistics. Now we can do something a little bit different. We can look at, let's look at 12 month aggression by type of game. 12 month aggression by type of game. We're going to leave mean selected. Click OK. You can see in our output here. So again, you've got all the code up top. Here's our output. So aggression at 12 months for people playing Tetris was 2.17. Uh, for people playing Angry Birds, 4.64. So you can see uh, those levels there. We'll do these kinds of statistical comparisons when we get to t-test so we can see statistically are these different. Uh, for right now, I've just asked you to report a mean and APA style. So remember, italicize your statistical symbols, space equals space, and then give the number rounded to two decimal places. The other thing I've asked you to do is to look at a box plot by some kind of category. So go to graphs box plot. Now there is a, uh, we can just graph the same thing we did, so 12 month aggression, plot by groups. We've only got one categorical variable here, so I'm just going to select game, OK, OK, and now we can see what we just saw uh, numerically, we can see it visually. So Angry Birds, they had higher aggression. They also had more variability. We'll talk about variability in a couple of weeks basically has to do with the dispersion of scores. So Tetris, lower levels of aggression compared to Angry Birds. That is about it, and that's all of the uh, graphing I've asked you to do in the assignment. Again, under this graphs, you can get scatter plots. We'll talk about scatter plots later. You can get line graphs. You're probably familiar with that. You can get pie charts. People really like pie charts. Um, you can get 3D graphs. We're not going to mess with any of that stuff in this course, but if you're interested, uh, please feel free to investigate that. One thing from your textbook that I didn't talk about, you can get a stem and leaf display. Um, that's just this basic kind of thing. You could see 12-month uh, aggression, how many people scored where. So you can get all that stuff from your textbook in here. Feel free to play around if you'd like.